Well, the time has come for a brand new FM22 story on the channel, and I think it's time for a unique rebuilding job. We're heading to Scandinavia, Sweden to be specific, and we're about to take a job at a club that has no place being in the second tier. Yes, hello and welcome along to episode one of a brand new FM22 story from Sweden and Helsingborg with me, Daniel. We are about to take the job of the Swedish giants who have fallen down into the second tier and we'll be looking to rebuild them to the top of Swedish football, but more importantly, back to the top tier of the first attempt. You may be asking, why this nation? Why this club? Well, we'll answer those questions in a minute. But firstly, if you're looking to a little rebuilding job that I just couldn't resist, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. This one will take the place of our annual head coach journey, which has just been completed earlier in the week. You can find a link to that playlist if you missed it in the eye above, as well as the Hemel save, which will continue to rotate with this one every day at 3.30. For those of you new to the channel, there's also links in the eye above to the Twitch channel, our football podcast and the merchandise store where you can find lovely mugs like this one. And I've got a feeling we're going to be using the time wasting quite a bit in this save. So please do check those out if you haven't already. You can support the show as a channel member down below if you wish to. But thank you for coming along. Thank you for joining me for another new save as we go to take the job at Helsingborg's IF. A club that find themselves in Sweden's second tier at the start of this game. But to find out why we're there and what made us want to take this save, I think we need to go on a quick history lesson, don't we? Helsingborg, a name familiar to many of my generation, mainly for their exploits in European football, for playing English sides in the early stages of the UEFA Cup in the 2000s, and of course a synonymous link with the great Swedish striking legend Henrik Larsson. Over the years, Helsingborg had been a familiar name, a household name to many fans in Europe, but what on earth has happened to them in recent years? Well, the answer is it's been a fairly recent and rapid decline because the club only won the double as recently as 2011 and took part in the Europa League group stages in 2012. But since then, unfortunately, it's been a rocky ride. The club fell out of the top division in 2016, only to return to the top tier two years later. But unfortunately, they dropped down again, which left them here for the 2021 season. In a claim to recapture their former glories, the likes of club legend Henrik Larsson were called on into the manager's hot seat, and more recently, another familiar name to British fans in Olof Melberg, but no one has quite been able to take this club back to their previous strengths. Although the club were promoted in real life in the 2021 season, in which we'll be taking part in a moment, they are currently struggling against relegation with just five points in 10 games at the time of recording, and it looks like a trip back down to the second tier might be in the offing come the end of the year. It's a winter to winter league, and we take over from Jorgen Lennartsen, a former Swedish under-21 manager, was currently struggling to scrap for survival with them in real life. They were promoted via the playoffs last year in third place, and we're going to be aiming to better that. We want to win the league. They are favourites to do so in Football Manager. And once they're there, we want to get them back at the top end of the Swedish top tier. So come and join me for the journey. Hopefully it'll be a good one. Either that or a first year sacking. Let's go and see. And we are back for our first day in charge at Helsingborg, the usual first episode stuff today. We'll have a look at all of the staff and players we've got to work with. And on both fronts, there'll be one familiar name to British fans. So this is a step into the unknown for us. Of course, in our head coach save earlier this year, we we're very close to taking a first job in Finland. But here we've got a chance in Sweden. We want to experience something new. A bit of a fallen giant story. We've got the job of rebuilding them. So let's see how we get on in our first day at the job. We've got to win the title. That is going to be the minimum expectation here. Wasn't achieved in real life, but of course they went up. And we're here on £650 a week with a job of getting this great side back to the top level of Swedish football. So let's get through the introductions. Let's see what we're left with at this club. We've got a two and a half star reputation, a lot of media pressure and a director of football that many English fans will know well. Particularly well known for his time at Wigan, Andreas Grankvist is not a very good director of football. He's had a very good career. He's got experience across a lot of Europe. But he doesn't have the attributes that are going to suggest something special. 
and he's going to play a big role in this save. We'll see why in a couple of moments, because this is no normal rebuilding job. The fierce rivals here, Amalmo, of course, will be hoping to challenge again with them in the next season or two. And the facilities are actually not too bad, including a 16,000 capacity stadium. So we'll be looking to bounce back at the first attempt. Let's see what squad we've got to work with. A 4-2-3-1 being suggested, but of course we'll work our tactic out as we go along. And has anyone spotted the familiar player yet? It's right at the bottom of the screen. A former Manchester United goalkeeper, no less. Let's move on to the expectations and the club culture. They want to win promotion by winning the league. They want to increase their commercial revenue, which, let's be fair, the former will achieve. And they want to work within the wage budget, which I think is maxed out. So let's get into the big stuff now, shall we? Let's go and meet the staff and the players we've got to work with. And we start with the staff. I think the word you may use is threadbare to describe this. The recruitment team is non-existent. Grankfist is the only man available there. He's actually on a bigger wage than us as well, which doesn't bode particularly well. The staffing team is half empty. The medical team isn't great, but that means there's room for improvement. But we'll get to why that won't be down to us in a moment too. Let's have a look at all the staffing as it shouldn't take up much room and we'll get them in terms of their contract. So the highest paid man at the club in terms of staff is Andreas Grankvist, a player we remember from his time at Wigan in real life. Wasn't there that long. Had stints at Groningen, Genoa and Krasnodar, has played across Europe and is a fabulous player, including a former Helsingborg one. But after retirement, takes up the reins as director of football, a Swedish international footballing legend. But the attributes do not give me too much hope. Nor does his personality, quite frankly. We've got a Brazilian youth manager bringing a samba football to the young stars of this team. He's actually not that bad as a coach, but doesn't have the managerial skills nor the tactical knowledge to be much of a help. And then a key man in a save like this is normally the assistant manager. Matthias Lindström, former Swedish international, just the three times, not quite the reputation of some of the others. And look at that judgment. Something we rely on is our assistant's judgment of players. But we're not going to be able to do that here. He's got man management, so hopefully the team talks will be a little bit easier. But the rest of it is not particularly pretty. And he's not a great coach either. The head of youth development, someone will be looking to in the future years of this save. And the only staff member tied down to a long contract. He's 51. He is also a manager too. And to be fair, he's probably the best staff member at the club. He's got experience across the region as a manager, and I think you can see why. A very good coach, a decent judge of ability and potential, a decent tactician, and fairly good mentally. Across the board, Hans Eklund is a man that we want to be working with. So hopefully he'll be a help to us rather than trying to take our job. But I'm pretty sure he could do it as capably as us. Let's see what coaches we've got quickly as well. Sven Andersen is the senior goalkeeping coach. He's actually pretty good. I think we can be pleased with him. The two general coaches, Alino Barrero, who isn't good at all, and Mikkel Dahlberg, who won cup, won goal for Sweden. Good mentally, but not the best coach either. So a little bit of weakness there, I would say. Not the best coaching lineup, not what we were hoping to see. But there is another familiar name in here. James Hayter is an under-19s coach. Lord know how that's ended up happening. But what a coach he is. He's brilliant working with youngsters. Not the best technically, but someone that we can rely on to help the young stars of the club. And I've got a feeling with the budgets we'll be working with here, we're going to have to rely on that a little bit. And nice to have someone else from a similar part of the world too. So staffing, definitely a problem. But staffing is going to be important because this is going to be no normal rebuilding job. We are going to be taking the director of football model. We finish the head coach. Why leave the director of football behind? I'm not an expert in the Swedish market. I couldn't come to Swedish football wholeheartedly and say these are the players I want. Of course I can have an influence, so we're going to have a slight relaxing of the rules that we use in our head coach story for those who are regulars on the channel. The director of football will be in charge of transfers, contracts, staffing, but we will be able to have a say. We will be able to add transfer targets. We will be able to dictate which players go on a transfer and loan list, but we are not going to be negotiating deals and the director of football is largely going to be in charge of what happens. And hopefully they'll use English football as well. Because I did notice very briefly, looking at the scouting screen, nearly all of the players that have been scouted are playing in the English pyramid. No Swedish players on there at all, despite an in almost entire Swedish staffing lineup. That seems a little bit odd to me, but maybe it's just because there's no recruitment team. So with the staffing done, with the rules set out, let's go and look at the main things. The squad. 
Now, first things first, we have got decent youth facilities here. I would expect the development centre to be pretty good. The under-19s, whether this is the sort of year where we can just throw them in, I don't know. But at one and a half star ability, I mean, they don't look great. That's probably not a good barometer for the standard of our first team. But for the future, is a very good sign nonetheless. In the under-23s or the reserve side here, only one standout player, which is a goalkeeper. And at 23, two and a half star ability, I would imagine he's pretty good for Swedish second tier level. So let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, but him, I will definitely get into our first team squad. That means we might have three or four very good ones. Let's go to the first team and find out. Well, first things first, a very young squad. The only over 31 is the star man who I'm most familiar with in this squad. That's Anders Lindegaard. The Danish goalkeeper, of course, has played for a number of clubs in England, the likes of Burnley, Preston, West Brom, Manchester United, all sorts. He's a good keeper. He's solid, he's experienced. The media description's perfect. He's well-travelled. He's got experience in various different nations, and he's played at good levels. A transfer fee of 4.4 million when he went to Manchester United, and he did play 19 Premier League games for them. So we'll be reliant on him to be our resolute character at the back, we are going to look at the rest of the squad based on star rating, which we know is dangerous, given the ability of judging players from our assistant manager. But regardless, let's see what we've got to work with. How does Lindegaard compare to the rest of them? He's one of the best players in the club. There's only three better, and they're all central players, so have we got a good spine of the team? Let's start with the other two keepers. We've met Nilsson already. Kalle Jolson is the other one. 22-year-old Swede. And I can now see why the other guy was in the reserves, because this one at 22 is very good and potentially a superstar for the future. And with Lindegaard at 36, it's not a bad thing to have two good young goalkeepers behind him. I'm really pleased with that. But Lindegaard ultimately will start as first choice. Let's move into defence where we've got Andreas Landgren as a right back. One cap for Sweden, three star ability, natural midfielder too, got loads of experience, played over 100 league games for this club and has played in the top tier for them as well. He's wanted, but he doesn't look like the sort of player I'll be wanting to leave out. He's a very solid one. Maybe if we end up with a holding midfielder, he's the sort that suits that role. But either way, I don't think when we're playing at this level, we can rule out players with good natural fitness and players that are versatile. So as a result of that, I'm pretty sure he'll be involved in the squad. Moving down, we've got two and a half star ability, Ali Soljic. He is a Swedish 23 year old who's not quite as good, but again, is a relatively solid player. He's actually a natural center half. That makes a bit more sense. He's six foot two, not great going forward. I'd like to hope we've got two center halves better than him based on the standard we've seen so far. A former Chelsea youth player many years ago, another one of those they held on to a few years. But I'd like to hope there's two better central defenders, if I'm being honest. Next player, Ravi Zukar. He is a right back and center half Congolese international on a £1,000 a week. And I'd say slightly better than the last lad we saw. Probably a little more suited to the right back role. Great natural fitness, versatile again, not the best mentally, not the most consistent, but a very solid player regardless. Spent a lot of time in the lower leagues in Italy too. On to Charlie Weyberg, who at 22, I think is the next best rated defender. Four star potential, always very good. Left footed as well, ball playing defender, so natural in possession playing out from the back. That's the style I'd like to play ideally. Returns to the club after a year away, and to me, is going to be first choice and one of the leaders of the back four. The other one is a 20-year-old injured centre-half, Jacob Person. He is out for 12 to 13 months, so there's no need to worry about him. Big potential, and he would have been the second best centre-half, but nowhere near fit. So I think Saul Hitch is going to be starting as it stands, lest we can find another one. Having said that, there's a two-and-a-half star centre-half who's just 17 years of age, Kasper Vidal. Do we give a real youngster a chance? Maybe. He's big in the air and we've seen the importance of set pieces when we're not in the top leagues this year. I'm a bit worried about the agility. I'm a bit worried about the teamwork. But otherwise, he's as good as all of the others for that second centre-half spot. And he's going to develop quicker. So maybe he's our man. Might be a first area we want to sign someone though. Only one left back at the club as well. That man is Davidson, who's 29 years of age. He is a solid left back, really solid, great going forward, 
Brilliant delivery into the box, better than any of his defensive attributes. I just worry that he's the only one. He's a Faroese international, so he's going to be going away for the breaks too. I'd like to hope that we can get a bit of strength in depth there. So not the worst defence in the world, but maybe missing one centre-half to make this a good first eleven. Let's move into midfield though and hope there's some pleasant surprises. We'll start with one of the big stars of the team, Sumar Almadjed. Three and a half star ability, four star potential, probably one star pronunciation skills on my front. I'll apologise for them. Oh, he's rock solid. Really good player. And we're starting to see that we're a bit stronger going forward. I think we're going to have to play with a holding midfielder because we've seen two that are great already. But he has got enough attacking quality to perhaps be a box-to-box. -box, and maybe that's how we'd look to deploy him. Good on the ball as well. A potentially decent playmaker. The next one is also three and a half star. Wilhelm Lerper is four and a half star potential as well. He's a massive right winger. Real quality. He reminds me, there used to be a, a player in FM every year at AIK, an English player called Kenny Pavey, and he was always available to sign for cheap in the English leagues. And he was versatile, he had similar stats to this, not the quickest, but a real solid player. And he just reminds me of him so much in terms of his profile of attributes. What a player, look at the versatility, can play virtually everywhere. That boy's going to be a star, we will make sure he is in our team. Next one down is 18-year-old Victor Blix. He has two-star ability, five-star potential. A right back who can't tackle. Maybe back down to the reserves for him for a year. Or maybe out on loan looking at his big wage there. On to the four-star abilities. Only three of these in the team. Two of them are centre midfielders. Brandar Hendrickson is the first. He is 25 years of age. A Faroese international again. He's a gem, this kid. Listed as a Roman playmaker. I look at him immediately and think box to box. Is he three and a half star ability at it? He is. He's good finishing. He's good going forward. Good penalty taker. Loves the long shot. Likes to shoot from distance as a player trait too. Oh, we've got our first superstar. He is brilliant. And he will be a key part of my starting 11. And don't you try and sign him, you two. Let's move on to Lucas Lingman, who is a 23-year-old four-star centre mid. And he's very good as well. My only slight concern is that all of the top players are the playmaker type. But when I look at this guy, I see a natural playmaker. So the two of them could complement each other well. One of those other ones in the holding role, just as a little bit of a base, a little bit of protection. It will allow those two to go forward. So a midfield three is something I'm pretty set on already. I think that guy is going to be a big part of it. Let's move on to Victor Lundberg, who is a 30-year-old, two-and-a-half star ability right winger. No, he's not. He's a striker and number 10. He's decent at both. Not good enough as a number 10 to make me play with one. His attributes are very similar to Will Swan, someone we've had in one of our saves this year. It was the Hemel save, wasn't it? But a good player, a solid backup. Maybe a job as a striker off the bench because he's tall and he can run in behind. But he is 30 years of age, so might be happy to move him on. Next one is 16-year-old Anton Nilsson. Two-star ability, five-star potential. Not quite ready yet, but another one of those big stars for the future. Next up is Rasmus Johnson, three and a half star ability number 10. He is very good. And he's a centre mid again. This is giving me some headaches now. Because what tactic do we play? We've got so many good centre mids, but then we had a brilliant right winger. Do I retrain him to full back and then maybe go for a diamond? I don't know. I really wanted to play a different tactic, but there are so many good central players here. And it seems bad not to play all of them. Or does it just give us the option to rotate when we're going to have a packed schedule? Because this season's starting later than the last one. It's a winter to winter league. It's all crammed in. Maybe that's going to help us in the long term. And another reason not to play the diamond is that it looks like we've got a good left winger too. Taha Ali, three and a half star ability, four and a half potential. Very different type, plenty of flair, plenty of pace, good on the ball. Maybe not the best crosser of the ball, the best technician, but one of those who gets bums off seats, gets people excited and likes to try tricks. So important to have one of those in the team. He would do well cutting him from the left on his right foot. The next man is Dennis Olsen. He doesn't look the best at two-star ability. I wouldn't really like him to be in the first team. After him is 19-year-old Adam Kaid, who is a three-star ability left winger. He can play number 10 or off the left and he's actually pretty solid. Again right-footed, again good dribbling and pretty good pace. 
He's someone who could be a good backup to Tahar Ali, who we just saw. The other left winger at the club here is Benjamin Aqua. There's plenty of them about. Three-star ability, five-star potential. Ghanaian player, actually a number 10 naturally, but can play anywhere across those six midfield positions. Again, lots of flair, lots of ability, but probably not as good as some of the others we've seen, if we're being really honest. Someone who will definitely play a role in the squad, though. Moving on to the only lone player in the squad, Joseph Amoarko. He's an 18-year-old, two-and-a-half-star player. He's not really good enough, and I don't know why we've got him. We can't terminate the loan, but he is going to be behind virtually every midfielder we've seen, if we're being brutally honest. And then on to the strikers. There's three players. One's injured, one's a youngster, and one's a superstar. We'll start with the injured one first. Rasmus Kajalainen. He is out for five to six months. Three-star ability, bit of a target man. Good squad player, but probably not going to play this season. And I'd imagine he's not going to get any better. At least he's not a player who relies on pace, though. So six months out shouldn't harm him too much. Had been playing in the lower leagues in the Netherlands prior to this season. On to the star man, Anthony van den Herk. That's got a Dutch ring to it as well. He is a Curaçao international at 28. And he is a very good centre forward. Can also play number 10. He won't be doing that for us. Unless we decide to go strikerless, of course. Places his shots. Oh, I'm falling in love with the guy. 5 foot 11. Enough pace to go in behind. He's a proper forward, isn't he? I'll probably play him as an advanced or a poacher because I prefer those roles generally. But he has got the technical ability to drop in too. We've got pace that can run in behind. So lots to ponder when it comes to him because he's such a versatile striker. And look at his goal record in other countries too. He's a 1 in 2 to 1 in 3 man and scored 11 in his first season here. The final one though, the youngster who's going to be backing him up this season is Asad Al Hamlawi. He is a 20 year old Swedish player, bit more of the target man style, naturally fit, 6 foot 1, good in the air and not the worst off the ball. But when I look at that experienced one, Lundberg, who we saw earlier, I'd rather him as my backup striker, if I'm being honest from the start. So a lot of youth that could be brilliant in the future, maybe not so much that can contribute now. Definitely a weakness at centre half and definitely a lack of depth at left back. But otherwise, this is a squad that should be competing. So I'm pretty happy with the one we've met. I'm definitely looking at a 4-3-3, a holding midfielder, two centre mids, maybe a deep line striker at the front. But let me know what you think having met the squads. Do you think we can do the job? The media certainly do. They've got us right up at the top in the season preview. We're just about odds on, but it's tense. 10 to 11, the 11 to 10. And of course, they didn't win the league in real life, which suggests that the two other sides are going to be worthy adversaries. So hopefully you're looking forward to seeing how we get on. The season starts in just a month and two days time. It's the 10th of April. Our first game is against Trellborgs, and we will be back for that in the next episode. Hopefully we'll have some signings to introduce, but let me know how you think we'll get on here. With us being expected to win the league, there's a lot that can go wrong. But will it be a sacking or success? that we have here in our first venture to Swedish football on the channel. If you did enjoy the episode and the introduction to the save, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. We'll be back with the Hemel save tomorrow. You can find that playlist up in the eye above if you've missed it so far. There's also links there to the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the merchandise store too. But a massive thank you for joining me for this series introduction. Above my head now will be the head coach playlist if you're new to the channel and haven't seen that save yet. And I'll see you back here in a couple of days time for our first game in charge of Helsingborg. <laughs>